Thank you for joining us for another power-packed message from Dr. Miles Monroe, provided by Monroe Global Incorporated and MonroeGlobal.com. We transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. We hope that this message is a blessing to you as you advance your life and discover your purpose. Now, let's go into the message. Prayer is the most misunderstood art of the human experience. Everybody prays. Buddhists pray, Hindus pray, Muslims pray, Scientologists pray, humanists pray to themselves. Everybody prays. And so prayer is not unique to any specific religion. I think prayer is unique to humans. The human spirit has to somehow look outside himself for help. That's a normal human response. And this is why even when an atheist gets in an accident, he say, oh my God. Inside of the human DNA, there is something which says, I need help outside of myself, outside of this world. And this is why people pray. However, not all prayers are answered. Now, some people think that prayer is, is just a suspicion. It's, it doesn't work. Matter of fact, there are people who are so skeptical about prayer that they don't, they don't even ascribe to it. They say that prayer is really a waste of time. Prayer is not real. It doesn't work. And in some ways, I could appreciate their comments because if you had a bad experience with something, you develop a skepticism about it but prayer is the most important activity of humanity first of all let me just correct a couple of concepts about prayer number one prayer is not a religious act religions use it but prayer in its original context is not an original and not, not a re religious act it's actually a governmental activity. It's a political act. Why? Because the word prayer, when you read the Bible, the word that is used for prayer is the word that is kind of a strange word. It means petition. To petition. And petitions are only presented to governments or to an authority. The word that is used for prayer is a governmental activity. So when you talk about petitioning, there has to be some specific things involved. You cannot petition unless you have laws and constitutions. So constitutional rights are necessary in order for citizens to petition a government. This is why when the Bible talks about the coming of the Messiah, it had to say, for unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders. He's coming with a government on his shoulders. And then it says he shall reign. Reign means it is authority on the throne of David, which means that is a governmental position. And he shall establish his kingdom, which is a government and a country. And he shall establish it on peace and righteousness. Prayer is therefore the petitioning of an authority for rights that are guaranteed in a constitution. Prayer is the petitioning of authority for rights guaranteed in the constitution. When I did my research on the word prayer, all the Hebrew words that are used are interesting words, and they have to do with asking for something from someone who you believe has it. In other words, you go to your boss and pray for a raise. The word prayer would be used there in the Hebrew language if you went to go and ask for a raise on your job. The word prayer would be used there because you are going to an authority who you believe has the capacity to answer your request but it has to be an authority with the ability. 
So prayer is not really a, 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 a religious experience. It is actually a legal activity. And this is why prayer is misunderstood. Here's the Hebrew word that is used for prayer in most of the texts. Matter of fact, there are about seven words that are translated from the word prayer. But this one is the most powerful one. And this word in Texas is also from a root word, desis. And these two words in Hebrew means petition or to entreat. Now you entreat someone if they are a governmental authority. You, you entreat them because you believe they have what you need and, it, and you have a right to get it. So prayer involves a number of things that has to be in place. There has to be a, an authority, there has to be laws, there has to be a constitutional right situation, and then you got to know what they have and know that you have a right to it. Prayer. Prayer, therefore, is petitioning the authority. Let me give you a couple of thoughts to think about prayer, and if you can keep up with me here, uh, write as fast as you can, but after the meeting, run to that table over to your right and get a copy of this session on DVD and CD if you wish to get all the notes. The power of the human is necessary in understanding prayer. Listen carefully, please. When God created the earth, he gave legal authority in the earth to humans. You remember God speaking in Genesis 1.26 uh, about the making of you. He says, let us make a species called man in our own image and in our likeness and let them have dominion over the earth. He didn't say let us have dominion. He said let them have dominion over the earth. That means he was shifting control over the earth from himself to his children. Now, one of the issues in the Bible that becomes very, very sensitive is the fact that when God speaks, his words become law, like any other king, except he's the king of kings. So when God speaks, his word becomes law. So when God says, let them have dominion over the earth, he was literally creating a law in the earth where them become the authority. Them is referring to humans. Now a human is a mystery and I mentioned this last time. A human is a composite of dirt and spirit. The word humus means earth or dust. Write that down. It means dirt, humus. The word man is the word God used to describe the spirit being that he created. The Hebrew word there is the word ish, man, ish, mankind. God made a spirit being out of himself and put it in a dirt body which he formed from the ground and called it man and because he is in humus he is called humus man or human. Now that is the creature God gave authority in the earth to. He gave authority in the earth to a spirit being living in a dirt body. That is the law. Therefore it means then that the only creatures that have legal right to function on earth with authority are spirits with a body. So if you don't have a body in this planet, a physical body, you are illegal on earth. This is why demons are illegal. That's why God says you can cast them out because you're the one with the legal authority. They don't have a legal authority. This is also why demons are trying to get into your body because they're trying to get the legal power. Casting out a demon makes the demon illegal. This is why every time Jesus encountered a demon, the demon begged to stay. Because he knew if he left, he's illegal. Well, you remember the story about the man who was in the graveyard when Christ met him and he was possessed with all these demons and, and he said his name was Legion. That's a lot of demons. And they begged Christ. They said, do not cast us out. But if you do cast us out, put us in another dirt body, the pigs. And it's amazing that Jesus cast them out and they went into the pigs. Why? The pig's body is dirt. 
Even the pigs didn't want them. I don't know how humans could... I mean, humans just kind of sit around with demons on the inside. But the pigs ran into the ocean and killed themselves. Why? They didn't want no demon living in them. Even the pigs got sense. But you see, demons are illegal. Now, here's the problem. Any spirit without a body is illegal on earth. And God will never violate his own laws. That is why, for example, God couldn't come into the earth legally without a body. The incarnation, everybody say incarnation. Write that word down, it's a big word, I can't spell it. Incarnation, the word carnal means flesh or dirt, carnal. Incarnation means the coming into a dirt body of God. That is why in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 9, it says these words. Isaiah says, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and his name shall be called Immanuel. Im means in man is mankind and El is Elohim. He says God is going to actually come in a dirt body. Many people who are skeptics about Jesus and being God and all that stuff, they don't understand that God was working on protecting a law. That's why Jesus Christ had authority on earth because he had a body. As a matter of fact, this is why you have authority on earth today because you have a body. When you lose your body, you become illegal and that's why you leave. If you die physically today, your spirit has to leave the planet. Absent from the body, you got to get out of here. Now some of you folks think you saw your auntie last night and saw your cousin and your uncle. and That ain't true. You remember the, the Bible talks about Saul going to Samuel because he wanted to see the dead spirit of Samuel. You know, the prophet who was his prophet. And Samuel was dead physically. And Saul went to a witch, a medium, voodoo, witchcraft, juju. I got all the words there? Okay. He went to a medium and he says, take me to the cemetery and call the spirit of Samuel back because I want to talk to him. So the king was led by this medium to the graveyard to talk because he wanted to get consultation from a dead person. Sounds familiar? And the Bible says he went to the cemetery and the medium did a little coochie 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 thing and the spirit appeared and said I am Samuel and began to talk. And the Bible says then the Lord spoke and said this is not Samuel this is a familiar spirit. Now familiar spirit means a demon that is familiar with you. That means they know your personality, they know your mannerisms, they follow you all day. Some of them follow you right now, they can't get inside because you're born again. But they, they know how you sit, how you talk, how you suck your teeth. They know everything. They pick up, they become familiar with your behavior. And they can impersonate you when you leave. So you thought you saw your uncle. When you lose your body, you are illegal. You can't function here. You remember Jesus told a story. He said that there was a man who was a rich, rich man and he treated a poor man, Lazarus, very badly. And they both died. One went where the demons are, one went in the bosom of Abraham in heaven. And the Bible says they couldn't talk. And, the, and they said the rich man was in torment. Now watch this. He said the rich man cried out and said, if I could just go back to earth and warn them, See, when you go, you can't come back. Matter of fact, even Jesus Christ cannot come back to this earth without a body. That's why he was resurrected, to make sure he could. And that body was not a spirit body. It was a physical body. The disciples thought he was a spirit. They said, this is a spirit. He said, no, touch me. Then he says, flesh and bone do not have this kind of material if I'm a, if I'm a spirit. And they touched him. That's why you're going to be raised again from the dead. So you can come back to the earth and rule. 
Now why am I telling you this? Because your body is the key to your authority on earth. Now here's the bottom line then. God doesn't have a spirit. He is spirit. And God chose to make himself illegal. That was his prerogative. Don't ask me why. I think it's because he wants you to share his power. He says the highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he gave to the sons of men. In other words, he wants the kids to feel how, how rulership is. So he has his territory. He gave you yours. He says, now you handle yours, I handle mine. And then he says, whenever you want me to come into yours, I got to get legal permission through you. Prayer, therefore, is man giving God legal access to earth through his faith. Prayer is necessary because nothing happens on earth without the cooperation of a human. God cannot just come into earth and do what he feels like. If he could, he should have fixed the murders in our country a long time ago. He should have gotten rid of all the Iraq war and all the terrorists. You think God's enjoying a bus being blown up on Thursday with children in it in Iran? He's not a bloodthirsty God enjoying all the killing, but the problem is he can't come in unless a human gives him access because the human got the body and God ain't got the body. That's why God says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear, where? From heaven, I'm in heaven. And I will forgive their sins and come in and heal their land. But the first word is if. There's a condition. If I can find a human who will cooperate with me, I can impact the planet. Prayer is therefore necessary for earth to be influenced by heaven. Matthew chapter 14. You know, uh, is prayer really real? Someone asked me the other day, are demons real? My answer to them was, if demons are not real, then Jesus Christ was very misguided. Because he cast out things that are not real. If you don't believe in Jesus being a demon releaser, casting out demons, then demons must not exist. Either Christ was completely confused or demons are real. In other words, whatever Jesus did confirms what is because he's God in the flesh well what about Jesus and prayer did Jesus pray I mean should you pray well, did he pray is prayer important to him let's look at Matthew chapter 14 verse 23 it says after he had dismissed the disciples he went up on a mountainside by himself to what pray when, when evening came he was there what alone by the way I want to just say this now. Jesus seemed to always pray alone. And I think that's an important thing to study because most of us love to pray in a group because we have no private prayer life. You need to develop your personal prayer life when no one is with you. Just like fasting. Some of you wait till the corporate fast before you fast. Well, don't wait for a corporate fast. Of course, a corporate fast is very scriptural. They've done it many times. But you should do it privately. Jesus did it. He fasted privately for 40 days. He prayed alone. And if you can't have a private prayer life, your public prayer life will be very weak. Look at this one. Mark 6 verse 45. After leaving them, it says... He went up on a mountain again to pray. I mean, constantly. He, he does what? He leaves them. Private praying is more important than public praying because corporate praying is only as strong as your private prayer life. You bring to the corporate what you are in private. Here's another one. Mark 14, verse 33. 32, rather. It says, they went to a place called Gethsemane. Okay, we know about that, but watch this. And he said to his disciples, sit here. In other words, you all wait here. He left them again while I go to pray. And you remember what they did? 
They did what some of you feel like doing right now. They slept. Hit your neighbor. Say, neighbor, don't miss this word. He said, because the spirit is willing. But that body, which is your most legal power, is weak. The spirit depends on your body. And so you got to keep your body alert so the spirit could do activity on earth. The key to affecting heaven on earth is prayer. That's the point I want to make today. Pray without ceasing. Say that with me. This statement is found a few times in the Bible. Matter of fact, in Old and New Testament. It's an interesting statement. Say, pray without ceasing. Ceasing means don't stop doing this activity. What is prayer? Petitioning. Constantly asking the government to do what is in the Constitution. Prayer is what? Asking the government to do what's in the Constitution. He says, never stop doing that. Don't cease it. Well, here's why. If heaven cannot do anything on earth without your permission, then you got to keep permitting it. Selah. The minute you stop praying, heaven stops interfering. I told you all about maybe 15 years ago when I understood why the world turns and why the world goes around the sun. God is smart, you know. And of course he's smart, but I mean, I just figured it out. See, God is so cool. God has the sun, the, world, the earth going around the sun in the middle, right? But he also has the earth spinning while it's going. The, way that, the reason why you do that is, you see, he knows that this planet will only be able to be influenced by heaven if humans are always praying. So he fixed the planet in such a way that it turns, but it also turns, while it's turning, so that somebody's always up. So right now in Australia, they sleep in. But we got our hands worshiping God, praying and believing God. And then when we go to bed, they get up and they start. So God has got something coming up. Come on, give God a praise. He's, he, he said, don't pray and stop. Don't stop praying. Pray without ceasing. This is why all night prayer meetings, you know, uh, uh, are, are quite good. They're not necessary, but they're good. All night prayer meetings means that you catch God both day and night. But if you get tired, you go sleep. Somebody else up in England. Somebody else up in China. They were working on some stuff, see? And so he goes, you can't stay up all the time. But he says, as long as you're up, you pray without ceasing. Here's something that Jesus said about that in the book of uh, Luke chapter 18. You want to turn there and read that. It says, and he spoke a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and never faint. Paul said these words. Paul says, rejoice all the time. Why? Because you should pray without ceasing. Now, now there's a reason for this. I think you understand the reason now. The reason is, when you stop, he stops. Do you get that connection? When you stop giving permission, he stops making invasion. So, he depends on you, and you depend on him. What you need fixed, you can't fix. He who could fix, can't fix unless you allow him to fix. So both of y'all got to get, you know, in harmony, so that when, now let me say it another way. Jesus said, look, wherever any two of you shall touch and agree concerning anything on the earth, then it shall be done of my Father who is in heaven. For whatever you bind on earth, then heaven got permission to bind it. Whatever you loose on earth or allow, heaven will allow it. In other words, heaven depends on you to influence earth. So if he wants to impact this country or your city or your family or your nation or your home or your business, there's got to be someone standing in the middle. You are the intercessor constantly. That's why the Bible has no such thing as a ministry of intercession. Let me say it again because some of you all think that's a ministry. There's no gift of intercession. Quiet. F 
find it in the Bible. Gift of prophecy is there. Gift of tongues. Gift of miracles. Gift of healing. Gift of wisdom. Word of knowledge. No gift of intercession. Let me tell you why. Because everyone's supposed to be all the time praying. Now the reason why we thank God for intercessors is because while you're sleeping, lazy thing, you not you, the one behind you, please. Don't get some folks don't want to pray. Somebody got to be up. God never chose specific people to pray. Read your whole Bible. He says, men ought always to pray. He says, men, period, all humans, ought always to pray. Now, if men always praying, we don't need nobody to pray for us. But the reason why people got to pray for us because we who are men ain't ought always. Give God a hand for your grandma who was praying while you was doing dumb stuff. Come on, give God a hand for your mama who was praying for you while you was out there doing stuff in the club. Your mama was in between God and you saying, God, zip them. My mother had 10 kids. You know, she needed prayer. Ten of us, eleven of us. She had to pray all the time. She couldn't know what we was doing. So all over the neighborhood, everybody, all over. The, Lord, wherever they are, keep them. And she did well. Everybody got saved. Praise God. This is also important for you to understand about your own family members who are not close to God. They can't. God can't get to them. So you can pray for them. That's why you pray for men everywhere, Paul says. You pray for them because they ain't praying for themselves. That's how important this week is to us. Look at this. Now. This is a, a powerful one here. In Matthew chapter 26. Jesus said these words. He says to the disciples while they were about to sleep. He says, watch and pray. Now, prayer prevents temptation. I, I think you need to thank God for this verse for a minute. Let me tell you why. You keep wondering, why am I always going back into drugs, going back into sex, going back into all this pornography, going back into all this adultery, going back? Why am I always going back? God says, here's a secret. Jesus said, look, he said, look, watch and pray so that you enter not into temptation. The safest way out of temptation is start praying. Lock yourself in the closet and start praying. She can't find you there. And you can't see the computer there. You start praying, there ain't no way you could sin. It's impossible for you to sin and pray. You got to finish sinning first. <laughs> so Jesus was telling the disciples, look, if you guys don't join me in prayer in this garden, you're going to fall into temptation of running when the pressure comes. They went to sleep. And they ran. My friends, it is important therefore for you to know that one of the greatest secrets to avoiding temptation is what you're doing this week. Prayer. And do it daily. Matthew chapter 6 verse 5. Jesus said these words and this is an interesting verse. He says, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. Write the word hypocrite down. Hypo means actor. You know, uh, the church probably has the largest Academy Awards teams in the world. If we ever had an Academy Award, we'd win all. Hollywood is a joke to the church. Anyone know what I'm talking about? We could act. We could listen, man. <laughs> Religious people are the best actors in the world. Jesus said that. He said to the disciples, I mean, to the Pharisees, he said, you hypocrites. The word is actors. He said, you actors. You are good at acting. He said, when you pray, do not act. Don't put on an act. Interesting. For they love to be standing, praying in the synagogue where everybody could see them. By the way, the word synagogue means community center. It's not a worship center only. It was a community center. Everyone came every weekend to know what's going on. It was like a community center. They used to walk around in the community center. 
Oh boy, Bishop Miles is holy, isn't he? Look at that. Publicly. Christ says, no, when you're doing petitioning to the government, you ain't got to do it in public. Why? He says, because the government is invisible. Is invisible. Read it. He says, don't stand on the street corners for men to see you praying. That's an act. I tell you the truth, they have received their rewards already. Why? Because people think they are holy. That's the reward they wanted. Look at verse 6. But when you pray, everybody say, but when? Now notice what I got on the line. Say it with me. When you pray. What's, that, what's the other one? When you pray. He didn't say if you pray. He expects you to pray. Being a kingdom citizen, the culture of your life is prayer. You will pray. It's like saying when you eat. You, you have to eat. When you drink water, you have to drink water. So when you pray, it's as natural as drinking water and eating food. If you don't pray, you are starving yourself from interference of heaven. When you pray, go into your room, your closet, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. It didn't say he doesn't exist. Never, never confuse invisible with non-existent. You can't see him, he says. But your father who sees what is done in secret will do what? Reward you how? Do it openly. Look at verse 7. I love this verse. It says, and when you pray, he repeats it three times. And when you pray, you must pray, he says. When you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans. Now the word pagan here means religious people. Stop babbling. You know, I, I, I don't want to offend people, and I try not to, but you got you to gotta deal with issues, you know. Uh, have you ever seen a person pray and, and they were, their prayer was so interesting, you were impressed? <laughs> All wise, omnipotent, omnipresent, holy, matchless, divine creator, thy humble, unworthy servant come to die on the strings of his messiah. I mean, and you go, this is good. That's an act. And people think that praying long, praying hard, praying loud, praying with many deep words will get God's attention. It doesn't. Let me tell you what prayer is like. It's like coming in a courtroom. Come on, lawyers, let's talk for a second. When you go into the courtroom, you ever heard the judge say, get to the point. <laughs> in other words, you're babbling, all that stuff, babbling. <laughs> Clap your hands, somebody. God said, look, get to the point. You come to get your laws and your rights, don't go on with no long story. All wise, omnipotent, all holy. God said, I know all of that. <laughs> you're trying to impress God no those prayers are to impress the people in the room if someone ever comes and say but that was a good prayer you better start praying because <laughs> prayer is not a performance for a compliment they're supposed to compliment you when they see the answer Let me tell you, let me tell you. This is so funny, this is good. <laughs> I just saw it in my spirit. Okay. You in court, I'm your lawyer. And I give a great dissertation to the judge. And we lose the case. You can compliment me about how good I talked. Mm -mm, brother, I lost the case. <laughs> That's how we pray. We stand for God for two hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. And get nothing. And God said, what are you doing? He says these words, look at these words. He says, when you pray, you must not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their much speaking. Lord, yeah, Jesus, oh Lord, yeah. God said, look, you settle down, just tell me what you want. Now don't get me wrong, there might be moments in your prayer 
when you get emotional. But you know how judges are. When you become emotional in the courtroom, they is adjoin the case for 15 minutes. <laughs> Go and gather yourself, the judge say, and come back in 15 minutes. We'll talk again. Praise God. Anybody getting this? Yeah, this is, this is, prayer is, prayer is doing business with a government. And you got to bring the laws to a government. The constitution is the power with a government, not your emotions. And prayer is you coming to God, Jesus says. And don't come with a bunch of words and all these impressive statements and these big scientific, you know, words from college. He said, look, bring my words. Clap, man. He said, bring my words. Bring the constitution. <laughs> Hallelujah. Here's another one. Uh, and this is a very serious statement here, but I, I told you that God needs earth in order to invade earth. I wanted to leave this thought with you. God did nothing without the cooperation of a human on earth. When you read the Bible, you'll find that in all these instances where God did great acts on earth, he had to find a human to work with him. Here's a verse I thought was interesting. When I was in college, I read this one. I laugh. The Exodus chapter 3. Now, uh, <laughs> we got about half a million people living in Egypt in slavery. And God prophesied that they would be there for 400 years. Well, God looked at his watch, and it was 430 years. So God said, okay, it's time to go get them. Now watch this. If God is God and he's sovereign and he can do anything he wants without getting permission, he can just come right in and set them free, then why didn't God do that? Watch what God says here in this verse. It says, he says to Moses, I have heard the cries of the people. I heard their groanings. Then God said, and I have come to you, Moses to go and get them for me. Here's the statement he made to him. He says, go I want to rescue them. You go. Verse 8 is a dependency statement. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of the land. That statement is amazing. God says, I have come down. Okay, then come down. The next statement is dependency. In other words, I am ready to do something in your neighborhood. I want to bring some changes in your business, changes in your city, in your society. I want to bring change in the world. He says, I've come down to fix some things. He says, but I need you, Mo. Let me tell you how bad God needs a human. For two chapters, God argued with the guy to convince him to cooperate. God could have said, look, you complain too much. Let me go find somebody else. He stayed with him. That's why God won't let you go. You are his secret weapon. You sin, God forgive you. Get back up. Why? I need you to pray, man. I got to use you to get into the earth. You mess up, you go through divorce, you make a great adultery, you drink liquor, come back, take drugs. God says, I forgive you. Why? I need your body, man. Moses gave God so much stress. <laughs> I can't talk. I'm not born in the right clan. I ain't come from the right family. God says, I still work with you. I need you. And then it took four chapters. In the fourth chapter, God became angry. It's almost like a spiritual slap. God says, Moses, shut up and just go. Why? I have come down, but I can't go get them without your permission. Prayer is necessary for God to change what's happening in our lives on earth. This is why we have to pray. I mean, pray without ceasing. Look at this, look at this statement. He says in Exodus chapter 3, read out loud for me, read or go, go. So now, go. And I send you. 
Go ahead. Now, see, I don't know if you understand the confusion here. Verse 8 says, I came down to do it. Okay, do it then. God said, no, no, no. You go. So you got I and you. I come, but you got to go. I want to deliver them, but Pharaoh needed a human for me to get to him. God wants to do so much, but he needs you. I hope today I stimulate you to pray right now. That you start thinking about everything that's not going right in your country, in your neighborhood, in your house, your children, your business, your school, work, whatever. Just step and say, Lord, please interfere. One of our members sitting here today said to me last week, she says, I got a case in court, and I, and I just found that, that, I, that I, I won this case. It's a case of some kind of a financial remuneration. And she said, how do I pray for that? I said, just use anything in the word that has to do with your rights. She said, I, can't, I don't know. I said, just stop it. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want for anything. I said, I said how about this one? The wealth of the wicked. It's laid up for righteousness. In other words, you got to start giving God permission to fulfill those words in your situation. Moses, I need you to go. Please go. And if you read that chapter 4 of Exodus when you go home, you'll see the argument between God and Moses get to a point where God just won't let the guy go. At the end, God just got mad. And the Bible says the anger of God burned within him. And he said unto Moses, go! <laughs> Why? As mad as I am, I still can't go without you. Now, if you study the whole story, you will see that everything that God did, Moses had to do first. God says, you tell Pharaoh they're going to be locusts. Go and announce it for me. I, can, I got the locusts. I made them. I controlled them. But I can't release them without a human pronouncing it. <laughs> Lift your right hand. Say, Lord, go into this week every day and open every door with my name on it. See, now you just gave him release to go into every day, Monday, Tuesday. That's how you pray. Let me tell you what you just said. The Bible says, and he, the Messiah, will open doors that no man can shut. But you got to tell him, open them. Give God a praise. They're opening on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Hallelujah. That means there were some people already in Wednesday who was blocking your move. But your prayer just now sent the power of God into the future. He's opening the door. When you arrive on Wednesday, the door just open. You walk right through. That's the power of prayer. That's why you pray in order to see results in the future. God wanted, you know, uh, it's the greatest story thing I, I read about leadership. Moses sees Pharaoh coming in the back. Five million people behind him and water in the front. This guy's in a bad situation. These folks ain't never fought for 400 years. They don't even know how to fight. They're slaves. They don't know how to fight an army. Here's an army that's well trained with horses and guns, not guns, daggers and shields, <laughs> and spears and all these, you know, the swords and stuff. They're coming to kill and they're outnumbered. And Moses looks at the water, looks at Pharaoh, looks at the people. They're looking at him. Watch Moses. The Bible says, and Moses stood upon a rock and said unto the people, be at peace. That means be cool. Calm down. Calm. Because the folks was afraid. He says, calm down. Who's talking? A man is talking. When you start talking, heaven gets up. Says, oh boy, somebody talking. <laughs> Hallelujah, dog. He says, someone talking. Moses says, be at peace. And then he says, I promise you all today. Anybody got a promise from God? Didn't God tell you he's going to bring you through? So why are you getting scared now? Stand up and say something. Can I tell him? I promise this situation. It must change. 
God told Moses at that rock and that bush that he was going to deliver the people. And Moses took that day and leaned on that promise real hard. He says, I promise you all today that when the sun sets, before the sun sets, he says, none of those that you see coming will be alive. The Bible said, then Moses ran behind a bush and said unto the Lord, Lord, did you hear what I told them? Come on, that sound like prayer. That sound like prayer to me. Let me tell you something with prayers. Prayer is not begging God to do something. Prayer is announcing what God's going to do. Come on, scream for a second. Just scream. Ha -ha. David didn't just say, the Lord is my shepherd. He announced, I shall not want. So he put pressure on God. <laughs> Let me tell you what you got to do. And tomorrow and Tuesday, right through the week, we come here to pray. Please use your Bible a little bit more. And talk to situations from the word. God said to Moses, his answer, why comest thou to me? <laughs> this is a great story. The, the army coming, the people scared. He doesn't make announcement. He hiding behind the bush. And God tell him, what you come to me for? Watch the next statement. Go and do like you said. Oh, Jesus, Lord, have mercy. Let me write this down. I want to tell you what God said just now. Write this down. I got your back. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, he got your back. When you make announcements in prayer, heaven is under pressure. You're going to meet some things this week that are going to be real challenging. People and situations. Matter of fact, some of you going into tomorrow and you ain't sure but some things going to happen. I want you to use the next few minutes when we get out here to just announce some things to the thing. See, that the thing for Moses was those soldiers. That was his thing. He announced something about the thing. He said, they shall not be alive at sunset. So I want you to talk to your thing before we leave here. My business shall turn around before the sun sets Friday. Let me just say something. By the promises God made you. And the Bible says Moses left the bush and went out before the people. <laughs> he stood up on a rock. And God said, okay, now I can't open this water unless you give me permission. I got the power, you got the permission. I'm going to say it again. I got the power, you got the permission. Let me say it one more time. I got the power to open it, but you got the permission to allow me. Why couldn't God just open the water? Because he had no permission. So God says, Moses, help me out here. Stand up on the rock, point your wood over the water, and say, open. <laughs> Come on, y'all, getting ready to go. <laughs> Total dependency. That's prayer. That's petitioning. And the Bible says, Moses stood up and stretched his rod over the water and said open it said suddenly I got a funny feeling matter of fact it happening to me right now in my life some sudden things are happening when you announce permission granted heaven I loose the water that means I allow the water to be open it says a mighty wind suddenly came now here's here's the proof of what I'm saying the water opened the people went through and they turned around and the water stayed open. Remember that? That's important. Why? Because all Moses said was open. I'm going home now. Oh, don't miss tomorrow night. Hallelujah. Some of you all have left some things open. You haven't closed some things, man. 
the water just stayed open. And guess what? Pharaoh coming. See, you can understand that some things you left open and the devil's still coming. Because heaven depends on you to also close. <laughs> the Bible said the Lord told Moses turn around stretch your rod again why I can't close it without a human command hmm. hallelujah I want you to use your mind let the Holy Spirit help you remember some things you didn't close you didn't close some things relationships business deals hurts unforgiveness you got to close them he can't close them if you don't release them the power for God to influence earth is in your hands it's in your hands I want to close with a verse of scripture that I thought was so amazing I, when I went to Old Roberts University I got to meet Kenneth Hagin one time and uh, he was teaching that night on this verse. And I want to give you this verse. It's a matter of fact, uh, uh, turn to Isaiah chapter 45. I want to close with this. And then we pick up here to tomorrow night. All of the visitors you invited back, please, please come back tomorrow. We'd be happy to have you. Isaiah 45, verse 11. Everybody read it aloud. Look on the board. I want you to find it. Underline it in your Bible, though. Underline it. It's a very important verse. Here's God's words to Isaiah. And this is our closing verse. 45, verse 11. Read it aloud. Go. Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his Maker, acts of me the things to come concerning my sons, and concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. I have made the earth and created man upon it. I, even my hands, have stretched out over the heavens. And all their hosts have I commanded. I have raised him up in righteousness. And I will direct his way. He's talking about you. He shall build the city back. Okay. Why don't you take a look at this verse? First of all, he says, ask me about the things to come. He's talking about prayer here. Prayer is taking God's constitution, what he promised you. You promised me these things. So these are my future promises. He says, and then a, 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 a con concerning the work of my hand, command me. The Hebrew word here means, it's, it's, a, it's a military term, like, it's like a, a sergeant saying to a, a corporal, go! He said, that's the word God uses here. Command me, like a sergeant commanding a corporal. Let me put it another way. Tell me what to do concerning the things I already promised you. The most beautiful part of this is this. He says, because I made the whole earth. In other words, I own this place. This is mine. And what I do down here, I can move anything I want to move, shift anything I want to move, but you have the license. I like the last part. He says, I command the host of earth. Host means armies, authorities. God says you command me what to do and I will do it tell me what to do that I told you I want to do and I will do what I told you I want to do that I want you to tell me to do on earth power prayer first John chapter 5 verse 15 what a beautiful verse it says if we pray according to his will, then we know that he hears us. How do you pray? What is his will? His word. Where's his word? In your hand right now. So he says, I want you to take my will. You've got to guess my will. 
take my constitutional laws, present them back to me, and then you know I hear you. The next verse says, and if you know he hears you, then you have the confidence that you know you have that which you petition from him. Close your Bible. Thank you once again for listening to this message as we hope that it has been a blessing to you. Our goal is to show you new paths and opportunities so that you can discover your purpose. It is your love, support, and partnership that makes Monroe Global possible. Please visit us online at www.monroeglobal.com for more product, partnership, or to join us at one of our live events around the world.